I guess we could have called this Friday Night Lights. Did you know that I made a movie? What was that actress's name? There was a show, a Tea Garden. Amy Tea Garden made a movie with her. She was in Friday Night Lights. How are you, John? I'm really well. I did not know that Amy Tea Garden story. Do you we'll know that person? That. No, I don't. I don't know that. But I'm so excited about the thumbnail. I, I don't know that I want to even bother with Amy Tea Garden. <laughs> this is this is this is one of the most exciting thumbnails I think I've ever seen. This is uh, this is fantastic. Thanks. So the, the laptop was talking. Thank you very much. The other thing that's good about this thumbnail is that this is another one of our. See, every co-host has a different approach to doing these thumbnails, and some are more like Hawkins used to. I mean, it was like an art direction project. He would stay on the phone all day, tweaking everything. Charles likes to have it straightened out two or three days in advance, and you just send cryptic notes that don't make a lot of sense. And if I have questions, sometimes they don't get answered, and I'm just left to my own devices. But what we've got here is a challenge of some kind. You are the referee in a challenge between a raccoon dog, which this was the best I could get AI to do, uh, more of a raccoon, a bat, a pangolin, and I mean, this guy's a mean running back. And then we've got the cow, the pig, and the chicken. I don't even know what we're going to talk about tonight, John. You know, it's funny <laughs> listening to you explain this to the audience. I'm cracking up because what I, I sent Jason, I think I sent him a text or a DM in Twitter or something, and I said, can you, can you make a pangolin and a bat and a raccoon dog? And then a, a chicken, a cow, and a pig. And I said, but it, it can be like Michael Jackson beat it or oh, yeah, West Side easy. Story. Easy. Or West Side Story. And, yeah, and Jason's probably going, what No, the no, but you started Michael with Tug Jackson of War. Beat it. Started with Tug or, of right, War. Right, or Tug of War. Right, or Tug of War, Michael Jackson beat it or West Side Story. And basically, this is amazing. I mean, I can't even, I, I, we could spend 20 minutes just on the thumbnail. It's so cool. So <laughs> well, thank is, you. So, yeah, this is awesome. And and what, what people may not realize is where the show's going to go. So a lot yeah. of people know we, sp we spend about 25 minutes together here on YouTube. But then we, we do a really extensive uh, exploration each week. And when we go over to, this, to the patron-only portion, this is where people who support our work, they spend five bucks a month or whatever. And uh, for me, it's over at Patreon and subscribe star slash I am John Cullen. And if you are supporting Jason's enterprise, you're at the Patreon or subscribe star forward slash crowdsource the truth, or they go to Odyssey and it's at crowdsource the truth, right? Yeah. And, yep. And so, so the people who are supporting us are going to see some interesting stuff tonight because while so many people have been fascinated with the story of the bats and the caves and the bat caves and the bat poop and <laughs> everything with the bats, <clears throat> then the pangolins. And then how did the DNA get in the pangolin to the point that the pangolin even made it to the South Park special? And then we, we were introduced to these raccoon dogs. And, you know, how cute are they, right? But we don't eat any of those things here in the West. We don't eat pangolins. We don't eat bats. And we don't eat raccoon dogs. I never even heard of a pangolin before all of this started. I never heard of a raccoon dog. <clears throat> right. I never yeah, heard too. of a raccoon dog. Right. Never heard. I didn't know that was a thing. Hmm. So, but, but the other team is much more pedestrian. The other team you might recognize from, oh, I don't know, the refrigerated section yeah. of your supermarket. Chickens, <laughs> uh, pigs, uh, you know, bacon, ham, what have you, and then cows. And so we're going to look at the... So it's almost like you've got this super team of superstars. It's almost like Marvel and the Super Ranger power. You know, you got the pangolin and the bats and hmm. the raccoon. They're very, very exotic animals versus your really pedestrian chicken and pig and cow. And so in a battle, we're going to look at which group of animals appears to be the bigger problem. And in order to do that, we're going to go visit with the patrons. So we're going to go to the patron only portion. We're going to go visit Tyson Foods. Uh -huh. I want to find what's been going on at Tyson Foods because it turns out Tyson Foods is in the chicken and pig and cattle business. And yeah. so if you want to know what's going on with the chickens and the cattle and the pigs, 
go visit Tyson. And so we're going to take a closer look in this show at what's been happening at Tyson over the course of the last couple of years, because we know before COVID, there was this chicken thing going on, right? And we saw the NPR stories and all that. So we've got some slides to share with the audience um, before uh, that looks like last week's slides. Does it? Yeah. Okay. Maybe. I think. I think. Let me see. Unless I screwed up. Hang on. Maybe it is. 329 I've got here. Well, then that should be it. I probably screwed up. I probably put the first slide. Maybe I. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. The first slide's wrong. Just go to the second slide. Go to the second slide. I'm sorry. The second slide is uh, the, the first slide. Right? Yeah, that's right. So this is how you introduce me. This is this is the new introduction. Right? Tastes like chicken. The author of the author of the fourth cover. Is that what the, the book is going to be called? Tastes like chicken. I like that cover. Right. So tastes like chicken. This is our new working title. Last week the working title was bats. This week the this is uh, better. The working title is tastes like chicken. Okay. So this is this is why we do this, right? So it's an iterative process. This is your kaizen? Oh yeah. Book published. We're, we're, we're doing, you know, incrementally improving the title of the book. So Tastes Like Chicken uh, is, is the story of uh, how these chickens got away with this. And we're going to take a closer look at this because this really has very little to do with uh, that other <clears throat> COVID pandemic. In fact, they're almost completely unrelated. Um, today is also, if you go to the next slide, today's a big day. Today is <clears throat> Good Friday, which... You know, quite frankly, I I would have failed. It doesn't seminary look that good. Or, it's kind of a bad Friday for think. Jesus. It's like, why, right, <laughs> right. It's like what the hell? Why would you call this Good Friday? I would call this pretty lousy Friday, the day yeah. they killed Jesus. It's like, Not the uh, best. I don't get it. It's like forgive me for being like a moron when it comes to theology. I just don't get the nomenclature, the Good yeah. Friday part. I would have called this lousy Friday. Yeah. And then this Sunday is Easter Sunday, and then they celebrate the resurrection of jesus christ right and all that stuff so that's all exciting it's a very very big weekend are you um, aware that salvador dali painted a stereoscopic crucifixion 3d no <clears throat> no is it uh, is it in uh, spain in a museum um it might be he does have a hall of stereoscopy in the teatro museo de dali oh. but i think i saw it at a special exhibit at the wadsworth athenium in um maybe hartford different kind of cat for sure definitely uh bird of a different feather Three well you know it's just very cool um and i saw that they're, they're going to finish that uh that church in spain Sagrada um, Familia. It's only been 900 yeah. years. Yeah, and they're finally getting ready to finish. Like it's going to finish next year or something. So that's exciting. Speed is right, not I don't want to get too far off track. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to get too far off track. All right. Yeah. About uh, three and a half years ago, I think it was in July of 2020, we did a show uh, called Are You Going to Eat That? And this was another one of the classic thumbnails where we looked at the abattoirs. And at the time, you're saying, it sure seems like there's a concentration of COVID y related COVID y stuff here. And it just seems very COVID y. And there's like COVID here and COVID here. And it just wasn't good. And we were looking at this in July of 2021 or 2020 and saying, mm, you know, anybody want to. Anybody want to look into this further, right? Anybody else want to take a closer look at this? And, and then we moved on. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Somebody was uh, losing oh, control of their, of, of their bowels as we were doing this show. Really? Because, oh, my God. Dude, when you see what we get to tonight, when we dig into what's been going on at Tyson, we didn't uh -huh. go that deep. We were just kind of scratching the surface and looking at the symptoms and saying, hey, wait right. a second, there's a whole bunch of people over here, and then there's a whole bunch of people over here, and we're, hmm, what the hell is this? And we didn't really realize what the hell was going on. Now we know, if you go to the next slide, what was going on, and we know this because of the World Health Organization's Food and Agriculture Organization. This is not the WHO. So the WHO is the World Health Organization at the United Nations. This is the Food and Agriculture 
organization of the United Nations. It's a sister organization, sister group. Wow. Right. That's right. So FAO. So this is the FAO with the United Nations. And what they tell us is, gee, Willikers, it appears this is really bad avian influenza outbreak, right? So we've been looking at this, and this way before COVID, way before COVID, like 2013, 2014. And that's what they're documenting here. And it's in the poultry. It's in the chickens. Well, one of the things that we kind of forgot to really dig into was, was it also in the pigs? Well, it turns out that there's a river in China called the Hongpu right. River. 16,000 pigs are found floating down the river. 16,000 dead pigs. Okay. That's got to be a, a scene. I, yeah, I can't believe we don't have drone footage. You know, how does DJI miss this stuff? I wish we had drone footage of 16,000 dead pigs. In the Somebody's got to have. No, it's documented. It? It's not, I don't know if they've got footage, but it's documented. And well, so here it is on Wikipedia. Hang Poo River dead pigs incident. Let's see if there's images. There oh, here we there go. go. Oh, boy. A lot of dead pigs. So, I mean, did, there you go. Uh, isn't this sort of a shocking like, wait a minute now, this obviously looks like yeah. a problem. Obviously, looks we like have a swine problem. flu. No, they've got avian flu. This is this is the issue. Is How can pigs? It well, because Anton Dilger had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. And on right. that farm, he had a pig, E-I-E-I-O. Of course he had a pig. Hmm. Why would he not have a pig? It's a farm. Look at this. That's a gigantic pig. They're Dude, not living. This is major die-off of the pork in China from the same virus that's killing the chickens apparently how's okay? this guy doing now the funny thing is you know how <clears throat> we've talked about that saying china's lying china's lying yes. this is all documented this is all documented they document the hell out of it we got the, Nobody all told the stuff us. because we don't who the hell is pulling up chinese research shit other than Amy and Bubba's Lamb Chop Shop and me. Who the hell's digging into Chinese research about pigs? Not no, Nobody wants to admit any of this stuff. So when you start to dig in and you look at this, it's kind of wild. There, there's the uh, the church they're going to finish, right? That's the Sagrada. Yeah. That's awesome. And it has Google cranes on it, even in Google Earth. Yeah. I've been in there. Yeah. It's a cool thing. Is it? Gaudi. I've never been. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Gaudi. I've never been to Spain. All right, so let's continue down this track because most people have no idea that there was a pig die-off. And that's why the thumbnails got chickens and pigs. Well, <laughs> there's some new developments this week that we need to share with the YouTube audience. So before we get to the patron-only portion, there's some really important public service type stuff that we need to share. So this outbreak of poultry that's going on in China, documented by the United Nations, Next thing you know, the Pentagon is tracking it. Now, I thought the Pentagon did like army stuff, you know, with destroyers and the Navy. Tracking and what, the Hongpu River thing? <clears throat> yeah, go to the next slide. Go to the next slide in the deck. So the next slide in the deck, there you go. There's, that's, dude, that's Pentagon. Hmm. Armed Forces Health Surveillance Center. Ooh, 2015. Department. So China wasn't lying. They knew about it. China, not only is China not lying, the Pentagon's on it already. The Pentagon is monitoring the situation in China. And it says right there, Department of Defense. Look down at the at the little mini heading there. Yeah. It says Department of Defense, Avian Influenza, H7N9, Surveillance Summary, number 47. So by February wow, of 2015. Right. Meaning they were monitoring <laughs> this in 2014. That's 10 years ago. 10 years ago, during the Obama administration, they were all over this. Yeah. <clears throat> when Trump walks into the White House and takes the oath and everything. Hey, Mr. President, congratulations. Here you go. Here's your briefing on China. Probably want to skip the Peking duck. Wink, wink. Best of luck. We're out of here. <laughs> And they hand him the folders, and he and Azar are sitting there going, what the hell, what, what's going on here? 
And that's when the CIA comes in and says, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, half the chickens in China are dead. The, 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 the pigs are floating down the river. And Trump's going, what the hell's going on here? Clean this up. You know, this isn't my, you know, I'll build the buildings. You guys clean up the pigs. It's not his, that's not his wheelhouse. But they dropped this on him day one. Here you see the Department of Defense is monitoring this in 2014. He doesn't walk into the White House until 2017. What is AFHSC? Air, Armed Forces Health Surveillance Center. Uh-huh. AFHSC, Armed Forces Health Surveillance Center. So they're monitoring this in 2014, 2015. The United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization is monitoring this. This isn't like a secret. This isn't like a cover-up or anything. I mean, it's... <coughs> they say a recent oh. study by the CDC to be published by the APR edition of the Journal of Emerging Infectious Diseases showed that although human-to-human -human transmission, H7N9 virus, is uncommon... Evidence has been reported of probable transmission. So it's uncommon, but it's happening. That's a stupid report. But that was back, that was early. Then right. in 2017, it goes highly pathogenic. And then we oh. have wave five, wave six, wave seven, all documented. And it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. And then we find it in the first patients in Wuhan. And so that's about as weird as it gets, right? So let's scroll ahead because the reason this is all relevant is, you know, it's like, you know, when you have the, the big football games and they introduce the guys, they come out of the tunnel and they yeah. say, and at tight end, it's Taylor Swift, right? And she <laughs> comes running out of the tunnel and all that stuff like they do this in the football game. Well, we've talked about the chicken, we talked about the pigs, but if you go to the next slide, we haven't yet talked about the cows. Well, this week we found out, go to the next slide, yeah, next slide. This week we found out Ooh. that there's avian flu in the milk. The $8 milk? It uh, turns out it, it appears it's more in the $8 milk than the $3 wow. milk. It's more in the raw milk uh, than it is in the pasteurized milk. And Ooh. so this... So this comes across the desk this week, along with <coughs> they detected avian influenza in cattle. Oh, wait yeah. a minute. It's they detect good. avian yeah. flu, but dairy is safe. That sounds mm -hmm. contradictory. Well, again, this is why the Vegas shooting, the field hospital story, that's why that stuff is relevant. It's, Without it's, that... Safe for them, but you have some. <laughs> yeah. So this is why <clears throat> these other stories are so relevant, because it establishes that they just lie. Right. Well, we know that. That's obvious. <laughs> well. All they do. We've demonstrated, right, so we've demonstrated that. All right, so now we know it's in the milk. We know it's in the cattle. Samples of milk collected from sick cattle in Kansas and Texas tested positive for avian flu, but the nation's milk supply is safe. This is just saying stuff. Right. It's safe. Don't worry. Be happy. Right. Take, take, take your Wellbutrin. Don't worry. Don't worry about the milk. <laughs> take, take, take your Zoloft. Everybody smile. Everybody be happy. Get back to work. Don't worry about the milk. Go drink some coffee. Don't worry about the milk. Don't worry. Don't worry. Well, the $8 worry. milk worry. is pasteurized, but this says so far unpasteurized clinical samples of milk collected from two dairy farms in Kansas and one in Texas tested positive for highly pathogenic avian flu. So how come the farmers and stuff are not just dying from this? And is this why they burn down all the different chicken and cattle? Things. So this is so we're going to take a closer look at this major cattle die off. So when we go over with the patrons to the patron only portion of the show, we have video from a couple summers ago where supposedly it got really hot in Kansas and all the cattle died. And at the time, I was like, it got really hot in Kansas. What are you talking about? It gets really hot in Texas every yeah. day. Every like over day. 110 in, sometimes. Right, right, right. Every day. 
same Florida, thing in New Mexico, they have a lot of cattle. Arizona, the California desert. It's like, what are you talking about? How hot did it get in Kansas that the cattle are dead compared to Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, Florida. California? I don't think they really do the cattle. I guess they do do cattle. A lot of cattle Florida, in but. Florida. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, they probably do do it. But I'm thinking the real cattle ranch in Texas, New Mexico, dude, it's over 100 degrees there like every day. And they're up in Kansas and they're going, yeah, it got a little hot and all the cows died. I don't think so. So in retrospect, yeah, we're going to look at the video. I have the video. This is the top. We're going to Kansas, Nebraska, Oklahoma, Texas, California, Missouri, Iowa, Colorado, Florida. All right, so we're going to take a closer look at that when we go to the patron only portion. But we also had this big event this week that I weighed in with a uh, probably a, a, a different perspective than a lot of people have, and that was the uh, the boat that crashed into the bridge. And so I, th- I thought, you know, I don't want to spend a lot of time on it, but I figured we better just talk about it for a second. We don't have yeah. enough time to talk about that and talk about P. Diddy and the bear cats that came into P. Diddy's driveway, knocked his gate down. And, you know, it's like, man. We're covering that with <clears throat> Shepard pretty well, the P. Diddy. Yeah. This, yeah so uh, the, but can the, I break some news right here on P. Diddy? I'm now in direct communication with one of the lawyers in the case, finding out some oh, interesting awesome. stuff. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Well, I was interested in the bear cats. They showed up with, I think, three bear cats and, you know, a whole SWAT team. And it's like, for what? You, you got a warrant for his arrest? In the lawsuit, they go into detail about how P. Diddy had like armories in the mansion and gang members would come in and he would hand out guns and they would leave. So, this whole entire raid on P. Diddy's mansions was due to the evidence presented in the Rodney Jones lawsuit. And I don't know, where'd you see those? Im- oh, maybe this is it. Homes raided by federal police. And here's a bear cat. <clears throat> it was uh, UK Mail. Oh, yeah, look at UK that. UK Mail had the oh, video. Wow. Mm. Aerial footage from Miami. <clears throat> and it shows the Traumatic bear cat. footage is federal police raid P. Diddy's homes. But this is, there's good reason to do this. I mean, and also the guy they arrested at the airport, there's photographs in the lawsuit. That's Brandon Paul. And there's photographs in the lawsuit of that guy with drugs in his hands. So obviously they were able to get an arrest warrant or I think they had an arrest affidavit for that kid and then when they searched him he had drugs on his person so they arrested him right away and for Diddy they just had sufficient evidence I think that's Little Rod right there they just had sufficient evidence to get a search warrant for his home but the thing is Diddy knows what they're gonna find they said they seized all of his surveillance cameras here's Little Rod and he's not a liar. Every, the other thing is his lawyer has submitted a letter yesterday basically countering all of the defenses from the lawyers for uh, Universal Music Group and P. Diddy and all the defendants where they're saying, oh, Lil Rod is a liar. All of this is fake. Sending him threatening letters saying withdraw the lawsuit. But now his his lawyer, Tyrone Blackburn, has written a letter saying obviously these allegations are not fake. Brandon Paul has been arrested. All this stuff that we claim was in Diddy's house has been seized. P. Diddy is in a lot of trouble, and I don't think we're ever going to see him again. I am convinced that the photograph outside Top Golf in Miami last night was as fake as Ghislaine Maxwell at the In-N-Out Burger, and both were exclusive to the New York Post, just like the picture of Jeffrey Epstein being wheeled out of the Manhattan Correctional Center dead. Right. What's going on right. with the New York Post and these allegations of trafficking? Interesting, interesting. Well, the other thing is we've got the, the boat that ran into the bridge, right? And yeah. some people commented that they think that the bridge was wired with explosives. Um, some people think it was deliberate. Um, and I think I've got sort of a, a different take on that. So I've got a slide or two on that. In the I want to hear that it. for sure. Did you so see this image relative to the bridge, John? What's that? So this is a website called BalticShipping.com, and this is the ship, the Dali, in question. 
This is a motor operator, a motor man or something, and this guy is a ship's master. On yeah, the yeah, yeah. morning of the incident, this Ukrainian guy who was paid $10,200 per month, which prior to yesterday, this was the highest salary of anybody in this database. This guy's last update was March 3rd, so he's got a 33 right here. His ID is 33401, so he's got a 33 right there. This dude is available uh, the 22nd of February, three twos, 2022. So this document is replete with threes, and oddly, this dude has been completely deleted from the database. He's no longer in there. And when we, um, there's another picture in here where he's, yeah. So now if you go to the website, it just shows this guy, and none of this has been backed up in archive.org, but we're just about out of time, John. We can continue to talk about this once we get to the sponsor exclusive segment. Anything you want to say before we go? Well, if, if there's that many threes, they probably did it. I'm just saying it's interesting to see that kind of steganographic message in a file that is then deleted. Who would delete that? Why is that Ukrainian guy removed from the database? Why was he the highest paid guy? Uh, there was a viewer who was looking through this who said almost everybody he saw in this database was wearing a maritime uniform, like a white kind of thing. And this Ukrainian guy is just wearing his regular clothing. It's just a lot of very weird things going on there. And this was an extremely strategic port to shut down because people don't yet realize the um, pressure that this is going to put on already strained supply lines. But we'll have to talk about that some more. On the other side. All right. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Sorry, John, what? I said sounds like a plan. That's what we'll do when we get uh, to the patron only. We'll, we'll dig into this. And Excellent. we got a lot of video clips, a ton of stuff. And we're going to Tyson Foods. You're going to be blown away. Blown Stay away. with us, everybody. We'll be right back on Subscribestar.com slash I am John Cullen. Patreon.com slash I am John Cullen. Odyssey.com slash at Crowdsource the Truth crowdsourcethetruth.substack.com and subscribestar.com and patreon.com slash crowdsourcethetruth. Huge thanks to everybody supporting the show. We wouldn't have all this information if it wasn't for you.